You may not think that this question is important, but in this day and age, you cannot deny that it seems to be more and more in the forefront, whether directly through the fact that we are judged by our parents, sometimes affecting the relationships we can build and the jobs we can get, or indirectly through the pressures of social media about what it means to be beautiful or sexy or attractive or handsome, where the latest gossip seems to surround the latest plastic surgery. And for some people, this question really affects their life. It can impeach on their confidence. It can affect whether they feel they're valued. It can sometimes feel like the root of what destroys relationships. No matter your age, you cannot deny that the question doesn't escape you. And the pressing thing is that it seems to be cropping up in young people at an earlier and earlier age. So, let's address this question. Am I beautiful? Beauty, as we know, is internal, intellectual, spiritual, external. There's many different ways of viewing beauty. And all of them work together. We have to keep that in mind. But today, I do want to focus on physical beauty. Even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, even though he came to earth to die for our sins, he himself was not exempt of being scrutinised about his physical attractiveness. Isaiah 53 is such a beautiful chapter to read about Jesus Christ. Verse 2 is interesting. It says, he grew up before him like a tender shoot like a root out of dry ground he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him there's a whole verse in the bible addressing the way jesus looked and he wasn't rated he wasn't given a hundred out of a hundred And you can hear this and think, well, he wasn't attractive, so what? But it's not that simple. In Revelation, we see another account about someone seeing Jesus. And this is how he's described. Revelations 1, verse 13 onwards. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. If someone was to take that and put that in a poem or love song, you'd probably envisage this very handsome, fine specimen of a man. There's are two different accounts about the way Jesus looked. So which one is the reality? If we go back to Isaiah 53 verse 2, there's something that's very key. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. That means whatever the people were determining as this is attractive, they weren't seeing that in him. But to the person who saw Jesus in Revelation, his eyes saw things differently. He saw things in ways that others couldn't. Isaiah 53 also talks about how there was nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Desire, it's it's something that we can internally generate. That means our desire affects how we interact with others. Your desire and how you desire beauty or what you see as can affect whether or not you see yourself as beautiful. In John chapter 1, Jesus is expressed as the true light that gives light to everyone. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world could not recognise him. Though light was before them, they couldn't see it. Sometimes the reason why we don't recognise the beauty that we have is because there's a veil, something distorting our perception, making us miss the obvious. An example is Adam and Eve. When Adam was created, he was created with sight. When Adam saw Eve, he was so attracted to her. But here's the thing, their eyes worked differently. 
They were both naked, but they didn't realize it. There was something he saw in Eve and recognized, internal and probably external, that was beyond her nakedness. In fact, the point they both realized they were naked was a point of shame. They realized that it was a sign of their sin and their fall. This shows us that what our eyes can focus on can shift and change. The Bible warns us to renew our minds, be built up by God's word, set our minds on things which are profitable and good and positive and right and godly. That shows us that your mind can be developed and changed and molded. The way you define what is physically beautiful is something that you have learnt. Your mind has been taught to believe that X, Y and Z is beautiful. That can set you free because it shows you that someone's determination of your beauty is not necessarily fact or true. It also means you need to be wise about what you feed your own mind. What you feed your understanding with will determine what you see yourself physically as. It sets you free in this front. You can decide to allow peace giving, loving, merciful truth shape your understanding of how you see your physical beauty or you can keep letting trash pretty much decide how you see physical beauty. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 onwards is a place that addresses worry and anxiety. It's also going to help open our eyes about how physical beauty is seen. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? So if I kind of put this in the words of this topic, why do you worry about the way you look? Flowers don't have to spend hours in front of the mirror or take a hundred picture attempts to get that perfect profile picture. Even someone who had access to all the riches in the world was not as beautiful as a flower. God is the one that enabled this flower to have such prestige and beauty. How much more you, even you, whose faith is still developing. Don't be anxious about these things, what you will wear and eat, what you look like. Give it up to God. <laughs> that verse is really interesting. But I remember when I was thinking about this. If a flower was next to a Solomon, you have a flower and then Solomon decked out, richest man in the world, looking pretty good. I'm not sure how much attention I would actually pay to the flower. In all honesty, our attention will probably go to Solomon. So that made me think about what this verse is saying. Not even Solomon matched the way that flowers were naturally dressed by God. It made me wonder how lost our understanding of physical beauty has actually become. Because actually, a flower is a very beautiful thing. The mathematical equations and patterns that you can get from a flower is just something that's just amazing because of its connection to other natural things in the world. It makes you think, was it a creator, a designer? You see, no graphic shading or blending can match the way the petals of a flower is beautifully coloured. Even the way flowers grow brings life. Sometimes we can forget the amazing power of photosynthesis allowing us to breathe. The way plants grow is beautiful. If we break down the way we've grown to understand physical beauty, we may find that our definitions go against, contradict these awesome and wonderful 
characteristics of a flower they don't have deeper connections to life and truth they're not naturally formed or blended they don't give life or oxygen in fact they breed low self-esteem and anxiety falsehood and fakeness fleeting vanity we need to start checking what we're defining beauty as some of the things that naturally make us beautiful have been turned to seem as negatives when they're so awesome from the pores on our face to how our skin is naturally toned they're part of the workings of our life a sign of how we've grown a sign that we are alive and yet they seem to be things that we are embarrassed about proverbs says gray hair is a crown of splendor it is attained in the way of righteousness we admire the strength of youth and respect the gray hair of age and yet in this day and age it seems like it's better to cover the fact that you have gray hair because age is perceived as something that's not as attractive there's a saying going from zero to a hundred and it could be said that this is just a saying but isn't there a problem when we see our natural state as zero you need to reassess what you define as physically beautiful why is it beautiful to be embarrassed by the things that naturally show the journey of our life why is that more attractive in this day and age it shouldn't be to be able to see yourself as beautiful you need to realign your understanding of what beauty is in the eyes of truth a flower was clothed more beautifully than the richest celebrity in the world at that time solomon if you want to have that kind of pure perspective on life and beauty keep this in mind your mind is moldable what are you allowing to mold your mind you can't be feeding yourself with images and gossip with social media that promotes a fake way of seeing your natural beauty. Your hair is beautiful, no matter which quarter you're from. Your skin colour is beautiful. The size of your lips and your nose is lovely and it suits you. There isn't error in liking fashion and having your own style, but make sure those things don't actually define your beauty. And when it comes to these kind of things of how you express yourself physically in work, in church, why don't you actually pray to God about it and talk to him about it? Matthew shows that God is a holy God, but it also shows that he cares about those little aspects we might assume that he doesn't. Take them all to him. Philippians tells us to take everything to God in prayer. If you're struggling to look at yourself in the mirror and see yourself as beautiful, you need to realign your understanding of what physical beauty is. Ask yourself, even write it down, what do I see as physically beautiful? And ask, why do I see that as physically beautiful? You might find that a lot of these reasons don't have any ground or life or naturalness or truth in them. They're just these man-made stipulations that change Every time there's a new trend, do you really want to exhaust yourself trying to chase these fleeting and unrealistic standards of physical beauty? Or do you want to embrace the way that God made you? Are you beautiful? Yes, you are by the grace and mercy of God. There's a point where you're going to have to be okay with yourself and be confident with yourself without relying on the affirmation of people. Even though Jesus was scrutinized physically and wasn't attractive to the way the world was done at that time, it didn't stop him from going on and being who he was meant to be. Even the physical attractiveness that he could hold on to and say he had, he let it be completely destroyed through the beatings and pain that he went through on his journey to dying on the cross for your soul so that you can have the opportunity to have a relationship with a God that loves you and doesn't determine his love for you on your physical attractiveness, on what job you have, on how much money you have. And that shows us that we should not limit ourselves to these things. In Matthew 5, where we read about anxiety, and we saw a different perspective of seeing physical beauty, there's a verse in there that says this, Seek first 
his God's kingdom and his righteousness, and then all these things will be given to you as well. Part of the way to start healing is to shift your mind from focusing too much on this topic. Look at other things in life that are good and bountiful and you'll start having a holistic view, hopefully one that's positive and will even permeate the way you physically perceive yourself. But still on this topic, make sure you have the correct definitions so that the wrong definitions don't keep you tied and anxious in areas you do not need to be. Feed yourself with the correct definition of beauty, embrace it and walk confidently in it.